In this home lab tutorial, I'm going to be installing and running an absolutely free and open source cybersecurity solution, which goes by the name of Waza. Waza is a SIEM and an XDR, which stands for an extended detection and response. And as stated earlier as well, it's absolutely free. So if you're looking to get into cybersecurity and want to get your hands dirty, this is an absolutely perfect home lab project for you. We're going to be installing and running our Waza manager on an Ubuntu VM. And we'll also be installing a Waza agent on our host Windows machine. And the agent is then going to send different events and logs to our Waza manager, which we'll then view on the Waza dashboards. As part of this home lab, we are also going to be performing file and directory integrity monitoring, which means that we'll choose to monitor a specific directory in our Waza agent. And the moment we create a file or we delete a file, those logs are then going to be sent to our Waza manager. So we've got complete control over what our endpoint is doing. So it's an amazing lab. And if you want to learn these aspects of cybersecurity, make sure you get your laptop, stick around and watch this video till the very end. Before we jump in, I'm going to be having a complete guide which will outline the whole process of this home lab. So make sure you comment Wazo in the comment section and I'll send that guide to you. Jumping straight into the requirements of what we need for this lab is you need a laptop with at least 8 GB RAM and a hypervisor. I'm going to be running VirtualBox again because it's free. And I'm going to be running an Ubuntu VM, which is going to host my Wazo manager. And the agent will then be installed on my Windows machine. So if we look at what the diagram will look like, we've got a Ubuntu machine, which is our Wazo manager right here. And we've got our Windows machine, which is a Wazo agent. So this is the Windows. And this is the Ubuntu. And the way I've set it up is that my Ubuntu machine is going to be connected to a bridged network adapter. So it looks like both of these machines are connected on the same network and they get the same IP address from um, my home router. Not the same IP address, but they're pretty much on the same network. So both these devices can easily communicate with each other and you need two-way communication for your whole Wazo agent and Wazo manager system to work accurately. So this is going to be what the diagram will kind of look like. So before we begin with our actual installation, let's quickly go to Wazo's website and see what it is all about. You go to Wazo.com. It says it's an open source security platform with endpoint security, threat intelligence, cloud security, etc. Um, it's got active XDR protection from modern threats. Um, it also says it's a comprehensive SIEM solution, as I mentioned earlier in the video as well. And you get all of these dashboards where you can see different events on your Wazo manager, which in our case is going to be our Ubuntu VM. So I've got a installation script already going. So what we'll do is first, actually, let's go into our Ubuntu server. And uh, once we go into our Ubuntu server, let's check the IP address. So this one's currently 192.168.0.217. And let's check our Windows IP address as well. That is 192.168.0.35. So both of these are on the same network, which is the 192.168.0.0 slash 24 network, which is exactly what we want from our lab setup. So before we do anything, let's go ahead and install our Wazo keyring for verification when we're installing and setting up our Wazo package. So we'll paste this command on our Ubuntu machine. So I already have the um, key stored in my keyring. So I'll just override it for now. But the first time you run this command, it will not show you any output and just add the key to the keyring. Once that's done, we will then go ahead and run our installation command, which is right here. So Let's head back to our Ubuntu machine. And um, let's wait for our Wazo installation, which is currently going through the different steps. The Wazo installer installs different components as part of its installation process, which includes the Wazo indexer, the server, the dashboard, file beat, etc. But once the installation is done, which takes about roughly about 10 minutes, uh, you'll see that you'll get, uh, you can now access the web interface message on port 443. And it also gives you a username and a password, which you can use to access your Wazo dashboard. So let's quickly go and see if we can access our Wazo dashboard or no. 
So I'll copy this password first. And let's go to our Wazo dashboard, which is accessible on your machine's IP address. So let's quickly launch a Firefox window and go and check if the install is clean and completed successfully or no. So we'll add the IP address, which is 192.168.0.217. And advanced. And let's accept the risk and continue. And there you go. So this is our Wazo interface, which is currently loading. And we'll add our username and password, which is admin, and the password which we've just copied from the um, CLI window. So while our beautiful Wazo UI is currently loading, we can see it's doing different checks. Um, and I'm pretty excited and waiting for this to quickly load up so we can see what the user interface exactly looks like. So this is what our Wazo dashboard looks like. Um, you can have a play around, look at the different options that you can access within the Wazo dashboard. So as per the script, I'm going to be installing our Wazo Windows OS agent using this installation link. So let me just copy that and go to our Wazo website so that we can install our Windows agent. So there are two methods. You can either do it using CLI or GUI. Um, but le first, let's download the Windows installer and we'll save that there. And let's run the Windows installer, accept the terms. And let's go ahead and see what exactly happens while the Wazo agent is installing. Once the agent installation is complete, you'll see a small window which says the Wazo agent. And you've got a field to enter the manager's IP address. In our case, our manager is 192.168.0.217. So let's quickly do that and it's asking for an authentication key now you need an authentication key so that the agent can then communicate with the server so to do that we first also got to add a manual entry of the wazo agent on our wazo manager so let's go back to our installation script and our ubuntu vm so on our ubuntu cli we'll run this command in order to manage our agents and add a new agent and let's select one of the following actions. So in our case, we want to add an agent. So let's go a add. Um, let's give a name for the agent. So we'll call it windows dash agent. And the IP address is 192.168.0.35. That's the IP address of my host windows machine. And um, let's confirm adding it. There you go. All right, so it's added an agent with an ID 001. But other than this, I also want a key so that I can add that key on my Windows agent. So as per the menu options, that's option number E, which is extract a key for an agent. And we'll give the ID number, which is 001. And this is the Windows agent key. So let's copy that and go back to our, actually let's quit this. And then let's go back to our Windows Wazo agent and add the authentication key here. So once you do it, let's quickly restart our Wazo agent service. So you go to manage and restart and it says agent restart. So once this is done, and if you go back to your Wazo UI on your server, we should now be able to see our Windows agent or our Windows machine sending logs and events to our Wazo manager. So let's quickly go and verify that. So on the Wazo dashboard earlier, we could see an agent summary, which was asking us to deploy a new agent, but now you can see that it says an agent is active. So let's click on it. And this should be our Windows machine, which we've just added. So there you go, it's Windows agent. That's the agent name, which we just added. And it's a Microsoft Windows 10 Enterprise with the number. And it's given it a cluster node of node 01. And the version here, which is V.12.0 is the agent version because we're running agent 4.12. So let's go into our Windows agent. And once we go here, we should be able to see all sorts of events, logs that are sent from our Windows machine, which is our Wazo agent to our Wazo manager, which is the Ubuntu machine. So once we've successfully added our Wazo agent and we've got communication between the agent and the manager, we will now demonstrate file and directory integrity monitoring. So what I'll do is I will choose a specific directory to be monitored in our Wazo agent configuration. And any changes such as creation of a new file, deletion of a file, any modifications within that specific directory that we are monitoring 
will then be visible in the form of logs on our Wazo manager. So it's amazing. You can have different endpoints running different agents, whether Linux, uh, Mac OS, Windows OS, any types of um, operating systems um, you can run as agents and all of those will send logs to your Wazo manager. So it's an amazing cybersecurity tool to set up and practice. So let's go to our agent configuration files and our Wazo agent config files are stored in program files and an OSSEC folder. To view the OSSEC conf file, you've got to have administrator privileges. So what I'll do is I'll just go to a notepad and I'll run notepad as an administrator. And once I'm here, I will go in and open um, our OSSEC conf file, which is under program files, OSSEC agent. So let's go here and quickly open our configuration file. Okay, so this is our OSSEC config file. And if you want to see anything related to the Wazo agent config, this is where you have a look. So as you can see, um, the manager IP address is here. The port number on which it sends all of these logs, which is 1514, is also listed. You can change whatever you want to change in here. Just make sure that you restart the agent service and also ensure that it's also changed on the manager and others. You'll have incompatibilities and stuff is not going to work. So let's quickly go and add a new directory for our file monitoring. So in the config section, you can see there's a portion here which says file integrity monitoring. And here there is default files to be monitored with different directories and their parts listed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding a new path which I want to be monitored as well. So I've gotten that in our installation script. So this one right here, let's copy this file path. But what I'm going to do is I've actually, so let actually let me paste this here. And I will replace this with a different directory. So I've created a different directory here, which goes by the name of Wazo test. So let's copy this directory and paste this instead. So we'll save that, control S. So once again, you go to file integrity monitoring and in this section, you add the following line and the path needs to be to the folder that you wanna monitor. So that's what I've done. I've saved it. I'm gonna close this configuration. And what I'll do is I will restart my agent once again. So on my Windows agent, on my Wazo manager, I'm going to go to file integrity monitoring. And currently we shouldn't have any events because we haven't generated any events. So as you can see, it's completely empty right here. So what we'll do is let's quickly go to that directory and create a new file. So let's go new um, text document and call it test one. And let's save that here. So once that's done, we go back to our Wazo manager and we should be seeing some logs if we refresh um, on our Windows agent. So let's quickly have a look and see what exactly shows up. So here you can see we've got all the details related to the file that's currently added to the system. So let's inspect what the document is. So it says that it shows you the agent IP. It also shows you the file name that you've created. So let's quickly have a look. There you go. This is the full log, which is test1.txt. So that's the exact file that I created in that directory. So one more thing what we can do is let's quickly go and delete that specific file now. So let's delete this. And once we do this and we head back to our Wazo manager, we should then see additional logs for the deletion of that file as well. So let's refresh uh, once again and give it a couple of seconds. There you go. So we see a file deleted log as well. And upon inspecting, it says test1.txt is deleted. So there you go what we did what we intended to achieve we've completely achieved as part of this home lab we performed a wazo manager installation we performed a wazo agent installation we then also demonstrated a file integrity monitoring test which was done by specifying a specific folder in our wazo agent configuration files which any changes when made to that folder then showed different types of logs on our Wazo agent. And this is exactly how real world systems absolutely function and look like. So if you're looking to be a SOC analyst or a cybersecurity engineer, 
make sure you practice these home labs. I've also got a complete home lab playlist, right? From setting up a network firewall, a web application firewall, all of these amazing labs. So if you want to get your hands dirty, please go and check that video. For this specific video, there's a complete lab guide that goes with it. So comment Wazo in the comment section and I'll send that to you. Amazing setup, easy installation. Please make sure you go and give it a go. If you like this video, I'd highly recommend you to check my home lab playlist, which is right here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.